Hello Internet, my name is Quinn, and this is Blondie Hacks. So today we are working on the electric steam boiler project, and in fact we're going to put the electric in electric steam boiler. That's right, we're going to be building the electrical box that you see right on the end there. We're going to be wiring up the contactor and the heating element and the fuse and the power switch and all the angry pixies are going to be wrangled in that little box. So, let's dive in. So to start with, we need to extend the wires that uh, connect to the thermo switch. They need to go under the base, so we're soldering and heat shrinking some extension wires on there. Heat shrinking is very satisfying. And then you can see the ground wire on the downpipe there. Every single metal part on the boiler is grounded, which is very important because this is basically a toaster in a bathtub. So that's a nice uh, press fit in there so that it can be removed. And the elbow goes on there to hide all the wiring. And then once we get that all kind of shuffled into place there, alignment's pretty important there because that hole has to line up with the thermo switch adjuster screw. And then there's that brass knob that you saw me make in a previous video. And that slides right on in there so we can make the adjustments of the pressure on the boiler. And then we're going to secure the wiring that runs through that channel underneath from the thermo switch to the electrical box. And uh, just using some scraps of zip tie here and some uh, self-tapping screws that I found in the junk pile. And uh, this turned out to work just fine. And in another video you saw me make the feet that elevate the whole base off the, off the ground. Now we're using that uh, thermal grease there because the uh, contactor has a heat sink on the back that's supposed to be there. We've removed it and we're replacing it with this heavy mounting block which is going to act as a new heat sink in addition to conducting the heat out into the electrical box itself. So I just mount it to that block using the thermal grease and uh, the original mounting screws from the heat sink. And then that whole unit just screws into the side of the electrical box there. Now for these other wires, we're using uh, these ring connectors and uh, using uh, a proper ratcheting crimp connector here. Those uh, squeezy kind you get at the auto parts store are really awful. You never get a proper crimp with it. So this is a, a ratcheting type that applies the exact correct amount of torque and it's got replaceable dies there for all the different types of crimping that you might want to do. And uh, that's going to be the ground wire for the metal uh, box itself. Again, every single metal part here is separately grounded because we've got a high voltage heating element in a pool of water and everything is metal. So safety very important. Now this is the grommet that's going to protect the incoming mains cord from the sharp edges on the metal box there. So we're just going to stuff that guy in the hole. And then we feed our mains cable through that. And the outer insulation layer of that is secured with a zip tie for uh, strain relief. And then uh, all of the ground connections that we've been making are all twisted together. And uh, these guys are going to be secured with a wire nut. And I do the same for the bundles of live and the bundles of neutral wires. Wire nuts are a, a good application for the, this type of thing. And then that wire nut will just get tucked into the back. I'm kind of working back to front here because the space is tight inside this box. And there's a series of jumpers and things that are needed to connect the contactor and the heating element. Uh, for the connections on the heater itself, I'm using ring terminals again. So that's the ground connection there for the body of the heating element. Again, grounds on everything, very important. And then I've done the same there as you can see for the neutral and hot wires. And lastly, I'm just checking continuity to my ground pin, make sure everything is going to be safe. Every single metal part is successfully grounded. And then I do the same with all the live and neutral wires as well to make sure that they are properly connected and also not shorted to any of the other metal parts. And we're ready for a test. So we're going to fill this up with distilled water using my 3D printed funnel, which you may have seen me make on Instagram. And there it is, all powered up. So far so good, nothing exploded, nothing caught fire. And now we need to make a hole for seeing the power light. And here's a little mechanics trick when you need to align two things and there's no access from anywhere. Put a little dab of putty on there like modeling clay and it allows you to squish it and then just mark the center of the uh, flat squish mark. 
and then drill a hole right there. That works surprisingly well, as you can see here. It's drilled a little bit undersized and then filed. And there we are. We can see our power light. So that's the electrical box, and uh, that's all we uh, all we really needed to do. That was the last major part for uh, this steam-powered boiler. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Please do support me on Patreon for lots more exclusive content like this, and we will see you next time.